Yo, let's give a nice round of applause for Erica Badu. Erica Badu, y'all. <laughs> How y'all doing? Hotel food? Hotel? Okay. Pizza back food? All right. All right. Mmm. 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 Erica Abi Wright, daughter of Colleen Wright. A lot of people around Texas used to say there was always something special about that girl. But Erica was much more than a girl. Erica was a uniquely gift rap collaboration of love, strength, and spirit. You know Colleen's an actress, right? Yeah, a local actress right here in Dallas. We used to go see her all the time. She's very talented. Everybody loves going to Colleen's plays. She, she married to William. You know, you know Tusi. Yeah. He a pretty cool dude, man, when, when, you know, whenever he's around. You know how that goes. He's home now, though. I was actually over there the other day for their daughter's birthday party. Little Erica. Yeah, man, two years old. Sitting there in the middle of the living room singing. Had everybody going, man. That little girl or something. Colleen got another daughter and a son, too. Yeah, Corianne or Coco and little Evan. Uh-oh. What's up? Tusi going again. Oh man, what's gonna happen? They gonna have to go to their grandma house. That's where they went last time? Yeah. But I ain't never seen him leave this long before though. I don't know if he locked up again or... I don't know. I used to wonder why Colleen would be so mad sometimes, you know what I'm saying? But I get it now, man, trying to hold down them three kids. It's a blessing that she got Thelma and Viola there though. It was Thelma who taught the girls discipline. Now she was strict, but still very loving. And she would get that switch. Just ask Viola. You know, Viola is Tusi's mom. And she feels bad that he's never around. So she's there with Thelma. Her and Thelma are really good friends. And, and they do their best to make sure that the children have everything they need, man. That's a ton of love right there. It was Viola's job to keep the children busy. Keeping them doing constructive things so they wouldn't miss Tusi so much. So yeah, they were happy kids, man. Running around the garden, carefree, singing songs, playing games. It's nothing like growing up in the South. It was because of the absence of her father that Erica developed a deep closeness with her mother. And what was that about? Erica with a smart mouth, her desire to be a young boss. Like when she refused to settle into nursery school because she couldn't control the atmosphere the way she did at home. Man, who gonna look after this girl? Erica's relationship with the mother was so special that she wasn't emotionally affected by her father's absence. Her mother would always tell her that it doesn't matter how you look on the outside. It's what's on the inside. And did you know that when Erica was four, <laughs> four years old that is, she actually performed alongside Colleen in a play. Yeah, she had the crowd going, man. That's little Erica on stage with her mom, got the crowd going. She had plenty of practice dancing alongside with her sister, the Marvin Gaye, Shaka Khan, and Stevie Wonder records, all whom Colleen were big fans of. Erica loved singing. She even loved to practice. Her favorite song was The Greatest Love of All. And it wouldn't be long before Erica would be singing alongside her cousin Robert Bradford, who used to play with Erica whenever he visited Viola's house, or Ganny as they affectionately called her. It was Viola who brought religion into the girl's life and also taught them about spirituality. Erica and Robert would write songs together at Viola's house, as well as sing for the family. And then there was her godmother, Gwen Hargrove, who was her mother's best friend, who was also an actress and a director. Gwen would throw plays every summer with Erica as the leading role, not because she was family, because she was good. So what really is there to do for a poor black family growing up in Dallas, Texas, knowing that crime is only but so far away? Well, the summers belong to Gwen Hargrove, and Gwen always managed to keep, well, let's just say she would keep 
Erica pretty busy. Let's see. First, it was the summer program where she was taking acting classes like she did during the school year. And Gwen also placed Erica in the church choir, which was pretty important where she learned to own her skills. By 1978, Erica was starting to write her own music at the tender age of seven, even though Viola kept making her change the words to Jesus. Erica would even start a band with her brother and sister where they would find constant work performing in front of the family. As 1980 approached, Erica would soon discover she could dance, and her mother enrolled her in a youth troupe. This would prove to be pretty influential for Erica because it was led by Dr. Gilbert, who was also very spiritual. She would also study formal ballet at the Etta Piper Jameson Company. 1982 high, the emergence of hip hop. Cousin Robert had become a break dancer, but what he saw would make his jaw straight drop. Erica and Coco was rapping, and not rapping, I mean rapping. They had the routines going, they was beatboxing and everything. They even had their own outfits. Robert couldn't believe what he saw, and he was more than excited to let him know what he had been doing. You see, Robert Bradford was slowly becoming a force. He had a crew called the Star City Breakers that had become pretty big around town. They were competing in events with large audiences. They even gained sponsorship from Puma and started making real money. By the mid 80s, Erica was going by the name MC Apples. And she had parlayed backyard rap routines with the sister and to doing festivals in Dallas. Erica and Robert would embrace hip hop as teenagers, rapping wherever they could, beatboxing, beating on cars. They were just having fun, man. But check this out. Your girl Erica was becoming a local hit from rapping at festivals and she was invited to start doing rap sessions at the radio station. Her friend Roy Hargrove, no relation to Gwen, was recruited to beatbox for her during those sessions. Roy would ultimately become a famed jazz player. And then there was the Heron B. The Heron B festivals are where people come together to show their love for African culture. But it's not just the love that they show at this festival, they actually practice this love every day. And Erica fell in love with this culture, she embraced it. This is where she began to start developing her African sense of identity. So you can truly understand the importance of the Heron B festival and how it will ultimately lead to shaping her music. This is also when Erica began to embrace wearing head wraps. She wore head wraps because because head wraps are a crown, and she is a queen. She saw this as a way to always distinguish herself, and she truly accomplished that in every way. So as the years went by, both Robert and Erica would graduate from a performing arts school. Robert would go off to a visual arts school in Chicago, and Erica would enroll in Grambling State. And two important things would happen to Erica while she was enrolled in Grambling State University. The first would be her discovery of the 5% nation, and she would begin to embrace many of their ideals. The other would be the changing of her last name to Badu. Badu was a jazz term, a tribute to scat music, which Erica often used when she performed. It was just a natural adaptation for her while performing and one of the craziest things happened to Erica while she was in college she actually got a call from Tusi who she hadn't heard from in probably who knows when years <laughs> he actually called to compliment her on the name change and he was the one who let her know what it actually meant to manifest light and truth he told a good choice kid Erica was all too delighted to hear that meanwhile up in Chi-Town your boy Rob was still doing big things and when I say big things, I mean big things. Rob was in a group called Kinetic Order, and Kinetic Order was in the process of achieving a lifelong dream. They secured a record deal with Chameleon Records, a branch of Electric Entertainment. Erica was going back and forth from Louisiana to Chi-Town to party with Rob and his friends whenever she had the chance to. And every time they got together, you know, they were still having their legendary freestyle sessions. But in life, things don't always go as planned. And unbeknownst to Rob, his label was going out of business, which would leave him with no record deal. And even though he had also signed a production deal, things would go south when him and his group member would fall out, therefore ending kinetic order. And Rob would ultimately move back to Dallas. And things weren't actually going the greatest for Erica either, as she had reached an academic impasse with Grambling State. She basically didn't want to be there anymore. In 1993, to the dismay of a family, Erica would drop out of Grambling State, coming back home to Dallas, joining the Soul Nation Theater Company, where she would spend the next few years acting and singing in local plays. 
by 1994, acting had taken precedent over singing in Erica's life. But this would soon change when Rob would approach her about becoming a group. The name of the group would be Erica Free as Rob had adopted the name Rob Free in college. They quickly set up shop at Grandma's house and went to work, amassing a beautiful collection of 19 songs combining hip-hop and R&B. Would you believe that two of their earliest songs were on and on in Apple Tree? Meanwhile, Erica was picking up waitressing jobs and teaching summer school classes to keep things going. She actually got a job at Steve Harvey's Comedy House, who was living in Houston at the time. One night when Steve was doing his act, he actually called Erica on stage with him to go back and forth. He was Ricky and she was Lucy. The act went so well that Steve started calling her up routinely. This was a big deal for Erica holding her own with such an accomplished talent as Steve Harvey. And everything was going great that Steve closed up shop and moved out to LA to begin filming for his new show, which was another setback for Erica. But still she kept grinding, actually picking up a job at a bar called Grinders, which would be the last job she would hold before ultimately landing her recording deal. Not only was she working at Grinders, but she was also teaching dance now, while still recording with Rob Free. And at this time, the local group Erica Free started giving electrifying performances, building up a solidifying reputation from Dallas to Houston. People were specifically taking notice of the hip hop and head rapping songstress as she was beginning to shine in the light of her own. And it was at this time the group Erica Free would gain the attention of Galaxy 9 Productions and their established producer Jabon Jamal. And once he saw them in person in the club, it would lead to them linking up in the the studio and ultimately signing a production deal for Apple Tree and No Love. But Erica's biggest break would come from the film industry when she secured a background role in the trailer for the film The Boulevard starring Ray Don Chung. And it was at the post-production party of the trailer where Erica would meet manager Tim Grace who would end up signing Erica. And with management in place, Erica Free put together a 19 song demo produced by Jabor and Jamal called Funky Cousins. Most of these songs would end up becoming the album Baduism. And Tim Grace would secure the group several opening acts for popular artists. But one group's manager in particular took strong interest in Erica Free. Her name was Tammy and the group was Mob Deep. And Tammy put out the word to up and coming record executive Kedar Massenberg who was starting his own record label, which would ultimately become Kedar entertainment. So Kedar would line up a show in Dallas, which would allow Erica Free to open up for his new and up and coming artist, D'Angelo, who he was now managing at the time. They opened, they electrified, and Kedar loved it. Of course he loved it. Who didn't love Erica Free? Not too long after the performance, Erica did receive a phone call from Kedar, and she would receive the news of a lifetime. However, that news would come with a slight catch. Kedar wanted to sign Erica. Erica. Not Robert. Man. You can only imagine this news would rock Erica and become bittersweet. And Erica sat down with Robert. They sat down face to face and had a heart to heart and you know, talked it out. And you know who Erica's biggest supporter was and is to this day? Robert Free. Just like flames, 
Stand behind the crowd of show. Come down to the top. I won't fall. Stand tall. Yes, yes, y'all. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, y'all. Come on. Stand up, please. Put this on the microphone. I think deep beneath a bit. Cause I'm a great MC. I'm a great MC. I'm a great MC. So get a load of me. When it comes to rhymes, I got 20 degrees, 120. And if you like my style, you know it's free. Hey.